Hello, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube. I am Clementine, and as always, I am super sane, but never mind that. You ever wish you had a machine that could just create all the custom guitar parts you want? Like bridges, knobs, trim rings, pick guards, etc.? What if it could also do all the custom pickup bobbins that you can imagine? Heck, what about the pick of destiny? I got four of them. Then what if it could calibrate itself, fill itself, heat and stir its own material, write its own programs, and make Les Paul parts in an unheated garage? This is my review of the Hey Gears Reflex RS Professional Grade Resin Printer. If that sounds like something you might be interested in, stay tuned! Roll that beautiful bean footage. Well, would you look at all them boxes? These are for the Hagers Reflex RS Combo. This comes with the Ultra Craft Cure UV curing and baking oven, as well as the Ultra Craft Wash automatic washing station. And of course, the Hagers Reflex RS professional grade printer. My first impressions on this printer is a uh, very heavy, sturdy, almost everything on it's made out of metal. The very first thing I did was to remove the original resin tank, install this little electronical dongle thing using two Allen screws, and then start installing a heated resin tank and I cannot recommend this upgrade enough. Now you just switch on the machine and it starts walking you through the setup. It can connect to Wi-Fi for remote operation or surprisingly you can do what I did and use the full functionality of this entire machine with no internet connection whatsoever. It has an auto leveling feature as well as self calibration. Once it gives you the okay, you're ready to add the resin. And this is maybe the most controversial part of this machine is a proprietary resin. Although you can find people online showing how you can use a third-party resin with this to get the perfect result or like me you've never done any resin printing this is the greatest selling point and best feature of this entire machine you simply uncap the resin shove it in the back of the machine there's a little valve in the bottle that automatically pops open and then it starts filling the resin tank to the correct level automatically and will maintain this level to make sure you don't run out while you're printing even though i will say one full tank of resin will print about 20 trays of guitar parts this is what makes this product work perfectly for a complete beginner the free slicing program hey gears blueprint studio which surprisingly will download from a flash drive and work completely offline to create a new print you simply select the machine you're using any module you have connected pick your resin type select the level of detail that you want bring up the 3D models you want to print, highlight those, drop them onto the build plate. And here's the best part of this whole system. You select one click slice, it will automatically orient the parts, build perfect supports for all of them, and place them exactly where they need to go on the plate and start creating a slice file. Now you simply send this slice file to the printer via Wi-Fi, or you can send it to a flash drive, plug that in the side of the printer, import it, and you're ready to go. And now if you're in a cold environment with a heated resin tank, it will start heating and mixing the resin. In my opinion, this is a must have upgrade i've printed hundreds of items in near freezing temperatures and never had a single failed print but after about 15 20 minutes it'll start printing then it's like ronco you just set it and forget it and the way resin printing works is the build plate will dip down to the bottom of the tank and there's a little screen in the bottom of it kind of like a super powerful tablet screen and it will flash a light onto the build plate and build a layer of hard resin then it will move up release that move back down and do it again and it makes different pictures and different shapes to build exactly the part that you need in layers. But unlike a filament printer, you cannot see these layers at all. They're completely invisible. All the parts look like production units. And when it's done, you can remove the excess resin from the top of the build plate, remove the plate, set it on its side, and use the supplied scraper to start removing the prints. But if you stick around, I'll show you a much easier, cleaner way that I figured out how to do this. Now I remove the supports from the prints toss them in a wash tank pour in a little bit of 91% isopropyl alcohol and set that thing to gyrate the wash boxes conveniently drain from one to the other you can pull out the parts to dry throw them in the UV curing machine take them for a spin and here are the results of my first two runs of pap 10 resin and while you could design any custom part that your brain could imagine in fusion 360 all the models I will print in this video are stuff I just found on Google and downloaded for free next I printed some p90 pickup covers even 
even sanded and painted one, then a Stratocaster jack plate, and some humbucker trim rings. And finally, I printed the part that I should have printed first, which is a thing called a drip caddy. This attaches with a one machine screw and allows you to hang the entire build plate at about a 33 degree angle and close the lid. And the reason why this is so great is when you get done with a print, you can tilt the build plate, hang it up there, and then all the resin will run out, making the whole process much easier and cleaner. Throw my PAP-10 print collection in the oven for a quick bake to final hardness, and this is what we ended up with. As you can see, there are some extreme fine detail, and all of these prints only used about two-thirds of a bottle of resin. That super high resolution that makes resin printing so popular with making figurines and game board pieces means that when using it for stuff like pickup spacers, trim rings, pickup covers, everything's gonna fit perfectly. Just like these 12 spline knobs, they went straight down over the potentiometer shafts, no problem. And one cool thing is that these are a replica of an old 40s or 50s Valco knob that you can no longer buy anywhere. And another thing is this stuff is so hard and tough that you can use it for actual hardware like these uh, strap buttons. In fact, unlike soft PLA filament, this resin when cured has a better tone than wood. It's closer to something like tusk or bone. Next I clean out the resin tank, which I admit I was a little bit scared of at first, but if you pour some isopropyl alcohol in there, it's like an antidote to this stuff. It just melts water thin. You can wipe it around just a little bit, pour it out, and it's all gone. Super easy to clean this stuff. So now I start printing in a PAH10 resin, which is a high heat molding resin, which I figured would be the perfect thing for pickup bobbins as it's hard as a rock and it won't warp while you're doing the wax potting. Here's a good example of what it's like to remove the prints from the support. You can break them loose with your fingers. It, they're not super hard and it's not really hard to get the things loose. It's kind of like uh, tearing Velcro off. And they do leave little dimples where they come off. But if it, that's in a like a problematic spot, you could always hit it with a little sandpaper after you get done with the uh, curing. I ended up printing a whole lot of different kind of pickup bobbin. Once you get used to the process, you can just start cranking them out of there. Print, release, break, wash. And in the end, I amassed quite a collection. I printed humbucker slug bobbins, humbucker screw bobbin, P90 bobbin, strap bobbins, two-piece bobbins, flat work, one-piece bobbins, bass pickup, three-string and seven-string bobbins, even Telecaster bridge and neck bobbins. Now this stuff doesn't print with the same texture finish as the PAP-10 does. It's a little rougher looking, but as you can see from this strap bobbin, it looks pretty nice. Much more like a production piece than something that was, say, a uh, filament printed. And you can see here the extreme, super precise scaling that it has. All these pieces are perfectly sized and fit together absolutely absolutely immaculately. And here on this filleted bobbin, you can see a little bit of those little pegs that stick off from where you break them off the support. And this is basically the worst of it. This wouldn't stop this pickup from being wound at all. And as I said before, this PAH heat resistant stuff is super tough. You can sand it, you can drill it, you can beat oversized pole pieces into it with a hammer. I went ahead and drove a set of pole piece magnets into a three string pickup and it came out great. It's ready to wind. Same thing with this strap pickup. The precision on these parts is fantastic. In fact, why don't we prototype, assemble, and test a set of split three pole slanted Z coil pickups right now. What I'm doing right here is soldering the positive lead to the beginning of the coil wire. Next, I attach it to this pickup winder, which was converted from a Singer sewing machine and tape the lead out of the way so it doesn't flap around everywhere. And then we just start winding. And after a few minutes, the coil is full. We can remove it from the machine, partially tape up the coil, solder the negative lead, and finish taping up the coil. Then we reinstall the center pole piece. And now we have one half of our dual sink coil pickup. And the reason for this low resistance is because this is only half the pickup and we're gonna use super strong N94 neodymium magnets. Now we can repeat this process and wind and assemble the second half of our slanted split coil pickup. Quickly check for continuity when in series. 
And here is where this PAH10 high temp molding resin really shines. I can drop these in this wax pot with zero fear of any warpage, melting. I don't have to be in a hurry at all. I can let them sit in there until all the air has come out of the coil. And when I pull them out, you can see it hasn't affected these bobbins whatsoever. And finally, I can temporarily install them in my pickup testing guitar and let it rip. And once again, even though I printed about 30 pickups, I still had a third of the tank left. And technically you're supposed to screen this stuff for contaminants or whatever, but I had no failed prints. So I just poured it back into the container, then cleaned the resin tank. Then I'm ready to insert a tank of PAWR10. And this is the cream colored resin that you saw fill in the printer earlier in the video. And this stuff is amazing. This is a high wear resistant, semi-flexible production resin. Everything I printed with this stuff came out absolutely completely flawless like it has an incredible finish on it all the parts look like store-bought injection molded professional product you may even use it to create a cursive script of your last name so you could stick this on something like your amp so everybody knows who it belongs to or maybe even make a replica of this orange flavored white chocolate bar if one felt so inclined for whatever reason but in all seriousness if you're someone who builds a uh, custom guitars amps pickups why 3d resin printing and what's the value of a Hager's rs for you realistically i would say one point is the rapid prototyping you can come up with an idea for a pickup or something in four hours from inception of the idea, you're going to be playing it. And that pickup, if it is good, can be replicated and sold just like it is. It's professional quality. If you make your own design of pickup covers or knobs, they're not going to be like janky PLA printed looking without having to pay some company five to 20 grand for injection molded tooling when you're making a small run bespoke product. Another thing is if you're restoring things and there are parts that you can't get like these old knobs. There may also be times when you need one or two parts that are readily available, but you don't have the two weeks to wait for them to ship. Okay, so why choose Hay Gears with their proprietary resin system? I think that totally comes down to the ease of use and the quality of the actual resin. The Reflex RS is an amazing product. There is no trial and error. There is no learning curve. There's no settings to mess up. You just drag and drop what you want and start making incredibly detailed prints right off the bat. And like I said, I never 3D printed anything before in my life. And during the nights, it was almost freezing in my shop and I didn't have a single failed print out of all of this. I remember when I was a kid, I used to think in the future, we'll have these machines where you can just type in what you want and it'll just create it out of thin air and it'll come out of there. And guys, I guess the future is now. It's called the hey gears reflex rs not really much else to say it's a fantastic product it works flawlessly i am clementine you have been watching heavy metal atc till next time